Hola, muy buenos días. Hello, very good morning to you all. You are all welcome to this Facebook live session that we are originated from the Presidential Cooperation Agency in Colombia, APC Colombia, to let you know, to let you all know the analysis of the dynamics of South-South cooperation and that was performed during 2020 by APC Colombia. This is some work that has been done by the Presidential Cooperation Agency in APC Colombia. And we would like to tell you what happened during the year. How did we adapt to the pandemic? What was the methodology that we used? All of this we're going to tell, tell I'll let you know. And to everyone that's connecting through this Facebook Live, we'd like you guys to talk to us. Where are you connecting from? Where are you creating that connection from? And what are those comments that you have to make to us first? I'm going to give the floor to the general director of APC Colombia, Ms. Angela Ospina de Nichols, director. Very good morning. Winnie, very good morning. Very good morning to everyone that's connecting here today through this Facebook Live session. Warm greetings to our colleagues in Colombia and, of course, to all our colleagues from the global south that have had the um that have been so nice to connect to us and so you guys can know what have we been doing it's just as i'm speaking about our, our colleagues from the global south well from bogota very good morning to all of you for some of you will be may good afternoon good evening but you want and a welcome to this report of analysis of the dynamics and the south south cooperation created by apc colombia or and the work that we carried out during 2020. In the next hour, the team of the director of offer and international cooperation besides they're here by my side. On my right, I have Carolina Quintero, the director of offer Miriam Vizcajon, advisor in charge of Asia and Africa, and Daniel Rodriguez, who has who is in charge of Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm sure that you, they're all they are all all acquaintances of yours. And this team. And the ones that are behind the camera, Sabrina, Luis, they have developed um, some work that will show a quick view of what we from, from ABC Columbia have carried out and contributed and formulated to adapt and expand our work with our partners from Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean during this last during this first year of pandemic of COVID-19 and I'm saying this first I'm saying first year because even though we would like to be talking uh the end of the pandemic that's not the truth what well, we're living is through a period where a pandemic has invited us especially to adapt so um um to really it's still really difficult to see these pages and, and, and talk about that uncertainty of the first quarter of the year 2020. How are we going to do uh, this? Uh, uh, how are we going to go be successful? Are we going to be stuck? But no, out of that uh, uncertainty, we went to a sense of pride when, as you will see in, brief, in a short time, how to adapt our instruments, our methodologies to face this challenge and, of course, to keep going with this driving energy of no leaving anyone behind so the balance seen uh, for seen from that second year 2020 more than six months of 2021 and i dare to say that it's a positive balance and that's a, a key message for you guys apc colombia works in a proactive dynamic way to make the south south cooperation work virtual and triangulate efforts to create new mixed conditions with Latin American countries from the um, virtual world. Of course, we would love to be in person with you and to be uh, in person with all of your countries, but um, the virtualization of the of the use of uh, virtual tools that had allowed us to communicate has been extremely valuable and useful. We have also been working to increase the resources towards the creation or the strengthening and strategic alliances that can make the benefits of South-South cooperation and get them closer with the final beneficiaries and, and to allocate greater resources and international assistance. But also, besides the challenges, we've also have seen amazing opportunities in virtualization of work. As since 
everything we've done everything in um, online this has allowed us first to have a, an online registry of the facts of the moments of the projects on how we have been working on them and that registry benefits uh, the fact of having greater transparency and especially uh, an availability of the information about the work of the agency with our partners around the globe. This availability of this work, we hope that at the end of this 2020, this year 2021, can be placed on the challenge that the agency has of being able of putting putting in motion the knowledge hub where all these registries of the projects that we have formulated will be left as knowledge management completely available to all our South, Global South partners. Also, we have seen the access to spaces of work and events of all kinds. The events have today more participants than ever in different times. As I said, and we were in the greetings, some of us will be midday, others will be starting their night. And that wouldn't have been possible if we continue with the previous dynamic of being only in person. So we have been able to hold some more ambitious events of greater coverage with less budget. And those budgets that we save have been so useful to strengthen other areas. Now, um, we're getting further. Now we can build more complex ideas in real time and provide response in real time thanks to the virtualization of work. And we do all of this with empathy and service calling. For us in APC Colombia, the feeling of public servant, it's key. We know, that, and that's the way we live it. We know that we're instruments for the creation of prosperity, improvement, and of course, with a classic message from APC Colombia, that we are instruments for the construction of greater equality in the world. Besides, right now, uh, we had the end of the Olympic and Paralympic Games where Colombia uh, did really well. Um, I would like to recognize our athletes and I would like to use that part and say that we here in APC Colombia, we are like athletes because we give everything on the ground. Even it sounds like an exaggeration, we spend day and night thinking on how to make things better, creating programs, identifying volunteers, defining expectations, um, putting programs together, resources, all that dynamic week after week, month after month, so that our product will be reflected and you will get to know this knowledge hub when you, we provide our accountability and present this report. But also we work with complete awareness that the work um, of cooperation needs to be sustainable. And that sustainability is a, a permanence over time and its capacity of adaptation to respond to the dynamic needs and ever changing it. It's a relay race, so we need to work with the willpower of construction so that each team can find a better situation, some better tools, and some better response to reduce the gaps and accelerate that commitment that we all have in the Global South with the 2030 agenda. And we in APC Colombia, we're committed with the decade of change. I would like to congratulate the director of her, Catalina Quintero, Daniel, and to Miriam, and Sabrina Pachan Luis Roa, and to all the team for this analysis. We hope that this document not only will be a document that we will see as an agency for our own reflection, our improvement, improvement on the impact of South South cooperation that we offer, but also so that this work can inspire other partners of the Global South to analyze what you guys have achieved and find pathways of improvement and strengthening. To finish, 
I say farewell as general director of the President Agency of Cooperation. After three years, I'm saying farewell at three years of management. I will leave with a transformed perspective with uh, solidarity values, learning, mutual, mutual learning, uh, horizontality of work, principles of cooperation South South that I make them, I will make them my own and I will put at the service of my country and our people wherever I may find myself. So dear friends, dear colleagues, dear coworkers, and of course, those of you who are here with us today in this Facebook Live, I would like to give you my warmest thanks and I will leave you with the team of the Offer Directorate of the of APC Colombia. So the microphone is all yours guys and let's present this analysis. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you, Director. Well, precisely you close your management in this launch of this report of Salsa Cooperation, which is another tool in this knowledge sharing and this profitization of Salsa Cooperation that we, in which Colombia has played a key role. But before giving the role to Sabrina and Miriam so they can talk to us about the methodology of the regions, I'll tell you quickly that we have an amazing partner in this Salsa Cooperation. We are here with the Embassy of the Dominican Republic but also the, the, by the Ministry of International Affairs of the Dominican Republic. To them, my, our warmest greetings. We have here from Cartagena, Cheira, in Caquetá. Uh, we have people from the University of Antioquia, the Delegate House of Quindío, et cetera, et cetera. They are here with us. We are here from Caldas as well. Uh, we have people from Caldas, some audience from Caldas as well. And to them, I would like to thank you. Let us know where you're, um, where are you saying hi to us from? Thank you for your amazingly valuable uh, collaboration. And we will keep reading your messages, guys, the messages that you drop. But immediately, let's go to Sabrina Pachon and Miriam Escallon, who will talk to us about how was the methodology of this report that we're presenting to you today. Thank you very much, Winnie. Yes, so. Regarding the methodology of the report, what we did is that we applied a mixed methodology that um, it, had a, it has a descriptive and a quantitative analysis of all the collected information by the whole team of the offer director of cooperation of projects and punctual actions done in 2020. The respective chapters, for example, refer to the adaptation and innovation during pandemic times. That's going to explain a little bit more into detail by the offer director, Media Escallon, and reporting and doing an analysis on how from the offer director we did an adaptation to respond to the, pro to the projects of uh, potential actions that had already been negotiated, that have been committed or that were being negotiated and of course to give you options and space meeting spaces to all the cooperation partners to the con member countries and to the national and international allies that was the way how this day of corporate salsa was was coordinated and that dialogue of the sort of dialogues of the south during the pandemic and the event and the event of colombia and the high level political forum these were spaces that were designed specially um, but to the virtual reality that we had to live in 2020. And this is part of the descriptive chapter that was not based on the data, uh, the data collected by the um, offer director, but it was based especially in the memoirs of these registries that we had of those events. Another uh, chapter is cooperation south south and the framework of regional mechanisms explaining how with our partners uh, we prioritize projects prioritized uh, financial contributions as well alcance in ese año a pesar de las circunstancias como lo explicaba la directora general of greatest scope that year as our general director explained the dynamics on on times and uh, on pandemics um there, how during the commissions um with the ministries of foreign affairs etc 
and the projects and the actions of international attendance were programmed virtually and they were successfully completed during the year. So we explain how these actions were taken and how we achieved and how to negotiate it in this mixed commission spaces, for example, in the framework of the situation registered in 2020. Regarding the quantitative analysis that we carried out, we will give you a little bit further detail for many years in the other uh, and the, um, and their offer director that we perfectioned in 2020, aiming to develop this type of quantitative analysis, because it's worth mentioning that we've surpassed many, many challenges from the offer director to be able to carry it out. And an important one was the one of making sure um, it would be from the officer director to close a qualitative analysis of high quality. In the quantitative chapter uh, in the South South Triangular Cooperation Analysis in 2020, we find analysis per geographical regions, per variables that we were able to identify from the instrument, which is the matrix of reprogramming and follow up with the offer directorate. As I mentioned, this is an instrument that was being applied for many, many years, but that had um, some obstacles to be able to use those data well. So what we did from the offer director was to make the decision of reviewing and depurating all that information in the matrix to adjust it, to make some changes of new information that we needed to have for quantitative analysis of the report and to proceed to apply data analysis that was developed by Sabrina Pachon. That was the general methodology. All the team from the offer, the offer director participated from the adjustment of the matrix and the review of the data that's part of the matrix. We wanted to make sure from every point of view, the quality of information. So this method the descriptive part with the qualitative part, with some data that is um, reported by the offer director. I give the floor to Sabrina so that she can give us greater detail of this quantitative part. Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone. Just as Miriam mentioned, we did an adjustment in the matrix that allowed us to visualize information of the Salsa Cooperation Initiatives that are in charge of the offer directorate. Um, from the analysis point of view, it needed, we needed it to be easier to make the queries easier for a team and they were allowed to have information that was precise. So in that end, the matrix of follow-up to the execution has around 52 variables um, to visualize, to make the visualization of the projects perfect. In general terms, what modalities uh, the, where it happens and what modalities does it happen and the punctual actions. Um, and when are they scheduled? Um, and finally, how the budgetary part so it allows us to know and uh, of certain activities of this project. Demand other types of expenditure, interpretation services, trips. Yeah. And during the pandemic, it's not about tri trip expenditure, but uh, yeah, but the interpretation services, what languages, how many hours. So this matrix tries to um, to Com to condensate all this information so it can help the statistical analysis. So to this end, mm, the other thing that allows us to do is to characterize the initiative for ex that we have. For example, what SDGs are they aiming to solve uh, that the general director mentioned? It's part of what we're committed to do from APC Colombia and 
these are ranges, these are fields that are mandatory, that allows us to understand not only the objective in terms of saying what SDG are we solving, but also to what goal and what indicator are we contributing with the particular project or the particular initiative that we're working with. And finally, um, what the matrix does and what it allows us to do is to do a geographical characterization of things. As, as the unit director mentioned, within this, we have uh, Latin America and Caribbean, Africa, Eurasia. So in the matrix, we also follow this structure so that we can differentiate the projects per region with a regional outlook. Perfect, Sabrina, thank you very much. I don't know, Miriam, is there something else to add? Maybe something about the methodology or something? All right, perfect. So we'll move, in, we'll move on. And before we give the floor to this subject of what was the adaptation during time, pandemic times, that was vital. And that also changed the way that we live and we do uh, things, it frames that immediate future that's coming in in regards of South-South cooperation. I to tell you that we're going to generate, I'm going to give some greens in Pecapo, Guatemala that's here with us, but also a partner that's been very spectacular to us as part of this portfolio of offer that Colombia has, Parques Naturales of Colombia, National Parks of Colombia. We have the mayor's office of Facatativa. Uh, we, we have from Maica also people of, of whom in Curacao, um, we did a project together that was really beautiful with the University of Guajira, but also from Cauca, we have attendees here with us from San Andres Otavento in Cordoba. And we love that you guys are all here with us from all the state church in Colombia, but also our international partners, as I mentioned, Dominican Republic, um, Curacao, Guatemala, also, I see here people from Chile and that's here with us and also from Argentina that is here that are here with us to so all of you, our warmest greetings. And we want to keep knowing where are you guys connecting from? I would like to take the floor now to Catalina Quintero, the offer director of international cooperation so she can talk to us about what happened during this pandemic and how did we have to adapt and what has been the road that this adaptation has led us to during this try, trying times. Thank you, Winnie. As Miriam was mentioning, this report, this document has a descriptive part, which is the one that I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the results. Why did we decide to do the descriptive part? Un poco desprevenidos, pero después de manera rápida, eh, entendiendo cómo es la cooperación sur sur que nos permite innovar, eh, sacamos tanto proyectos como ideas eh, novedosas y eventos novedosos que eh, pues fueron únicos, digamos, en, teniendo en cuenta el año 2020. Y este capítulo es el que hemos eh, denominado Adaptación en tiempos de pandemia. Eh, ¿qué nos... pandemic. So what we do last year, we did a lot of events that allowed us to transfer the knowledge in a remote way. And at the same time, we achieved a greater impact and greater beneficiaries in each one of the events. One of those events is the one that you see here on the screen was the day of South South Cooperation. Day of South South Cooperation, we wanted to use a topic that was called expanding South South Cooperation in a cross dependent world. The pandemic also gave us the lesson that we needed to adapt our solutions in a quick way and that the Global South had common challenges. So. What we wanted to do in that event of South-South cooperation was to ask ourselves that question, how through cross-dependency we could look for better projects under the modality of South-South cooperation. Additionally, and as an offer of South-South cooperation in Colombia, we inaugurated our webinar cycles titled Dialogos del Sur or Dialogues of South. This Southern Dialogues, our webinar cycle that we did this year too, and that the aim to position the offer of South South Cooperation of Colombia. For the year 2020, we precisely were talking about public policies, strategies that our Colombian entities had around 
the pandemic. So we have policies aimed for social, financial, and cultural measures. That's where we were with the Ministry of Culture, the National Planning Department, and the prosperity, Social Prosperity Department. Also, we address the measures that Colombia used to improve health through ICTs. And also we were here with the Ministry of Health and Social Protection and the ICT Ministry as well. And we talked about educational measures as well. What the, what the ministry had to do to give access to the less fortunate. Uh, this was another space precisely aimed to position and to say what we were doing as Colombia in terms of the, of the pandemic. Another event that you guys see here on this slide was the participation of the representation of the government of Colombia in the political forum of high level 2020. So what we did there, which is the contribution of South Cooperation uh, to initiatives for technology, innovation, and health. We have panels from Asia, Africa, and Latin America, and precisely what we aim to do was to review how we were adapting to this pandemic and how this innovation, which is one of the focuses of South South Cooperation, how we contribute to overcome the effects of the pandemic. These were the main events that we have. The idea is for you to perform the report in the descriptive part. Because in the descriptive part, you will see and you will have access to the main conclusions of each one of the panelists. We think that the activities that we carried in 2020 will be so useful for the year 2020 and the analysis of the activities that we carried out and for a better future. Now, in the report, we move to the third chapter, which is a chapter that has a quantitative nature, as Miriam mentioned, methodology that meant that talked about the quantitative part. Here, I'm going to give you the general aspects of the results so that after both Miriam and Daniel and Luis can do a detailed analysis of the main results that we found. Um, first, we found um, that we, we did more projects than functional actions. I would like to stop a little bit. The bet of APC Colombia has always been about having and moving on with the global cell partners in looking of, to formulate projects. Projects that will have a duration of two years with concrete goals, indicators that will allow to provide follow-up. In that framework, what is reflective for you? We projects in relation to actions puntuales. Encontramos que se hicieron 87 proyectos que estaban ya en ejecución o finalizadas. We had 87 projects that were already executed, mainly uh, already executed or that were undergoing in Africa, Six and Asia, and most of them in Latin America. What we see here in this map is precisely what I was mentioned. We work by project. And our main work and the main projects, um, and our neighbors, we had eight projects with Africa, six with Asia, and a project that had a, a cross cut that was cross cutting throughout the whole region. También podemos encontrar, y esto también es una un tema muy importante que something that's really important about our work is that besides formulation of projects, we want our projects to be in line with the SDGs of 2030, a clear contribution to the SDGs. That's why our goals allow us to provide accountability from the generation of projects and how the project has a real impact in the SDGs. For the year 2020, we see that it can, we contributed, um, it contributed to SDGs 8 about decent and decent work and economic growth by 18% and to the SDG4 of quality education, 15%. Then there were other SDGs like 11, health and welfare, 10, zero hunger, and 9% to SDG 11. 
comunidades sostenibles. Adicionalmente, hay un 38% que eh, aporta. Adicionalmente, there's a 30% that contribute to all the other SDGs for the 2030 agenda. I would just like to um, add that regarding the cooperation, regarding cooperation, we identified that Colombia positioned himself itself by the main benchmark of cooperation from the alpha point of view in the regions of Latin America, Caribbean, and Asia. This is really important, guys. It's one more is one of the main results of the data analysis that we carried out that we have in APC Colombia. Now I'll give the floor to Daniel Rodriguez, who is going to zoom on the data that was found in Latin America and the Caribbean. Daniel, the floor is yours. I would like to stop a little bit for before we move to Daniel. And it's because I would like to say especially to Ambassador Marta Cecilia Pinilla Perdomo, Ambassador of Colombia in Trinidad and Tobago, who is here with us today. We've been carrying out a very productive work with Trinidad and Tobago, especially with the project that we are starting with them about uh, Paralympic sports, but also we are here with everything that has to do with Spanish courses, where many diplomats of that country are taking these courses. So to them, or to her, a warm greeting and from El Salvador, we have folks from El Salvador who are joining us today, who are carrying out the really special work especially in everything that has to do of transfer our knowledge as an agency so they can strengthen um, their work. Daniel, once again, the floor is yours. Thank you, Winnie. Effectively, we're going to do the analysis of Latin America and the Caribbean. First thing to highlight, as we mentioned, the introduction that refers to all our work during the year 2020 was everything that has to do with adaptation. Latin America and the Caribbean was no exception during this adaptation process. We had to adapt the project that most of them were 90% of the activities in a presential way. We had to take it to virtual activities so that we could move on with the objectives of the project. So entering, entering the figures, the first thing to highlight is that just as we saw in the general presentation that our director, our office director is doing in Latin America and the Caribbean, also most of the initiatives that we were able to do were projects over the punctual activities. This contributes to what we've been calling in the agency the profitization of South South cooperation. This means for us to have more projects to which we can do follow up, to which we can identify their punctual results so we, they can provide to us data to compare with other regions of the global south. Highlighted pathways of cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean were mainly offer and double and two way. As we can see in the graph that we're showing you guys here, brought together both the offer and two way represent 79% of the cooperation that we have in Latin America and the Caribbean, and 21% that was demand by our country. Most of the offer that Colombia delivered to other countries of the global south was focused in the sectors of healthcare, employment, and strengthening other institutions and public policies, and other things that we call other services of social policies. In concordance, one of the mega goals that our agency has that refers to the number of executed projects in two ways in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean, because we aim that when the four year period is over, we can see that in 2020, we got closer to that work and most of the projects that we had were projects that were two ways. Just as, as, a, as we did that, we're going to now specifically talk about the countries of the Caribbean. With the country of the Caribbean, just as we're going to see with my colleague Miriam Escallón, we have a particular aspects in the work that we carry out. Traditionally, as we're going to see with Miriam, with, with the relationship with countries of uh, Africa and Southeast Asia, we were working these countries more in initiatives and in punctual activities than in cooperation projects. During the last years, we've been carrying out some work to strengthen the alliances with them and work closer and closer in the projects of lines of South South cooperation during the year 2020, we had two projects of cooperation in execution and a project of cooperation that was fi finalized. 
And same thing happened with the country of the Caribbean, where we had first, for the first time, what we call a mixed commission of cooperation. First, it was the first mixed commission of cooperation with countries of the Caribbean, and the first mixed commission of cooperation that we had, not bilaterally between country countries, but at a regional level. This will allow us that I'm sure in the uh, report of 2021, we'll be able to see this of the execution of those projects that were approved during the year 2020 in the framework, what we call the mixed commission of cooperation with countries of the Caribbean. Well, regarding Africa and Southeast Asia, we have to highlight that dynamics are different. They're completely differentiated. As Daniel mentioned in the director and the offer directorate, um, we have made many decisions aiming to favor the projects compared to functional actions. In the case of Africa in the year 2020, we found that there are more functional actions than projects, but we made some decisions and took some actions in 2020 that would allow us that in 2021 to make this situation to change. However, in the year 2020, we observed that punctual actions overcome the projects in the case of Asia. In the case of Asia, it's a different case in the year 2020. We achieved that and the data can show you that we aimed and we drove our South-South cooperation towards projects instead, which are projects with a greater scope uh, executed with some results and some activities and report follow up reports that are punctual aiming to identify what are its effects in the countries and in the partners that we work with the next graph in the next graph we can see the punctual case of africa how the cooperation per countries in Africa and Colombia, it's being still highlighted as an offer of salsa cooperation in this region. In the four initiatives offered, we see that 67% of these initiatives that are more than a bunch of actions in this region, we highlight everything has to do with the strengthening of productive chains for the improvement of agriculture techniques with Morocco. In this country, a commission mixta in 2020, which is a great and here we have to highlight that we have a mixed emission between two countries and we carried out punctual actions, preparatory actions for this mixed commission. That's one of the explanations on how this year in Africa, we have more punctual actions and projects. We carried out a lot of video conferences, a lot of workshops to be able to prepare this mixed commission and identifying which were going to be the projects that will be part of this bilateral cooperation project. The other country that we were working with, still in Africa, with which developed a demand of cooperation was with Egypt for everything that has to do with, um, sorry, the initiatives of strengthening our capacities for everything that has to do with culture assets, preservation of culture assets. In this case, the two street action with Africa was came from the mixed bilateral commission with Morocco, and it was directed, aimed for the strengthening of capacities of management and communication of cultural patrimony between both countries. These two triangular projects that were developed with Africa are going to be explained later on by my coworker, my colleague, Luis. The initiatives offer as a to this region were in line with diverse sectors. Among them, we have the agriculture sector, the strengthening of institutions, peace, security, and defense. And we align them with different SDGs. In the case of Asia and Eurasia, we include Eurasia here in this analysis because we finished a project with Azerbaijan. And we can say that with this region, Colombia, fulfills a role of demander or, dem or these demands were taken care of three projects of demand that were done from Colombia to this region were taken care of by Azerbaijan, Thailand and Turkey in different sectors. Sectors were agricultural, tourism 
and companies, and they were in line with the SDGs 8 and 17. These projects were aimed towards strengthening the social, the uh, business tissue with a focus on creative industries, promotion of healthcare tourism, and development of capacities and exchange of knowledge. In the case of Granada um, or crops in Colombia, we highlight the original focus in the projects that were carried out because out of the six projects, three were identified with participation of many countries in Asia. This is why the relationship with this uh, area is done through regional initiatives or identified as in the case of the project four to take care of premature babies or like, with babies at common demand by many countries in Asia that they present to Colombia. The offer from Colombia and the two exchanges were done through also initiatives and had a regional scope. We had that right now the project, a two-way project that was carried out between the regional initiatives of the Sea Corridor of the Pacific East, uh, Tropical Pacific East, and the Corn Triangle of Southeast Asia. This initiative is highlighted. Why? Because it covered four countries in Latin America and the Caribbean and six countries of Southeast Asia. Everything has to do with preservation and management of protected maritime areas. Thank you. Continuing with everything that's to do with triangular cooperation, I give the floor right now to Luis. Thank you, Miriam, colleagues. Very good morning. Good afternoon to you all. As you have described, my, as my colleagues have described, the triangular cooperation was not foreign to the pandemic and the necessity of reprogramming working agendas. In the case of triangular cooperation, we had to adjust methodologies and go virtually being priority to these projects to establish dialogue with potential projects while um, the financial partner, our overview was cleared. But we, we were able to reschedule and execute six projects and we developed also punctual actions in them. Between among these subjects with new partners that we established in 2020 and have generated projects in 2021, we had conversations with World Bank with us, USAID and Honduras and with the Stockholm Institute about bioeconomy and fair transitions. Next slide, please. In terms of work, of course, the work that we carried out, we were able to execute initiatives of a triangular co cooperation with in Africa, South America, and everything that has to do with agriculture, education, employment, energy, um, environment, social policies, peace, and security. Specifically, with the uh, partners that we have, Triangular Cooperation was a mechanism of work that was really important to get closer to partners in Africa, like Burkina Faso, in a prick of knowledge transfer or best practice knowledge, and probably positive and everything has to do with general feminine mutilation. In the year 2020, we presented projects to two triangular funds, the German Fund for Triangular Cooperation in Latin America and the Caribbean, and the fund between Spain and Costa Rica for the Triangular Cooperation projects that were approved, and that started being executed in 2021. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Luis, and Miriam, Catalina, and Daniel for this explanation, this report about what's happening in each of the regions with triangular cooperation and what happened during 2020. Also, we are here from Sena, that's been a key ally at many moments of this salsa cooperation with many countries uh, from Guaviare, from the Presidential uh, Council for Adolescents, from the Corporation of Biosustainable bio Trade. We have here people from Honduras and Panama to everyone. Thank you very much. But now we're going to talk about those contributions. What happens with those contributions, those regional mechanisms to which, of course, Colombia belongs to. And I give the floor right now to Daniel Rodriguez once again. Well, in everything that has to do with strategic alliances from APC Colombia, we have identified that to include a greater number of results and participant countries in the cooperation projects and triangular projects, it is necessary to establish strategic alliances and will allow to boost the financial and human resources that we have at our disposal 
that in many cases in the in the global south are scarce. Maybe now, nice to take alliances, we're going to highlight some of them that we carried out in the year 2020. The first one related to the IVD, Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, that we developed this project and alliance, as our director was mentioning, for everything that has to do with strengthening every, with the Paralympics. Basically, it was to strengthen the Paralympic committees of the four countries of the region, three countries in Latin America, and one country in the Caribbean. In the same way, in the strategic alliances, we had the strategic alliance with the Pacific Alliance. With the Pacific Alliance, we have two, what well, we used to do, at the moment, uh, personally, three very important work that with everything that has to do um, the pandemic, we have been able to modify. First, we did strategic alliances first for everything that has to do with mobility of students of other countries that are members of the alliance that came to Colombia. First, we had something about uh, young people volunteering. And third, contributions to the cooperation of the Fund of Pacific Alliance through which in the year 2020, most projects were focused in supporting the member countries of the alliance and everything that has to do with the pandemic. In the case of CAPTAC, it was a contribution that we did to support the Central American countries in Panama and everything that has to do with strengthening with tax and uh, policies based on the experience and international recognition that our Ministry of Finance and Public Security has, especially in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. Also, we had a contribution to the global COVAX alliance for everything has to do with uh, COVAX, for everything has to do with research and look for vaccines. At that moment, we didn't have the vaccines to help in innovation in industry to the vaccines that may well able to contribute to the countries of the global south. And on top of that, we did a contribution that we've been doing from the year 2019, and it's to the Financial Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, CEPAL. Institutos de Estadística de la Región de América Latina y el Caribe para el fortalecimiento de los registros administrativos, de sus sistemas de registros administrativos. Hicimos un aporte adicional en el 2020 para este proyecto que, como lo mencionaba... We did a contribution in the year 2020 for the support, as mentioned before, it has a duration of three years. Uh, we aim for projects of two to three years that will have um, some projects, specific projects. And during the year 21, um, and we will see it in the next report. In, the, in, in terms of regional mechanisms, the development of social cooperation, the framework of multilateral mechanisms as a relationship strategies with different regions of the world. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk about two specific ones. Del Pacífico, y ahora mi colega Miriam hablará sobre la que se hizo con Auda Nepal. Bueno, en el caso, Miriam is going to talk to us about the relationship that we have with Auda Nepal. Here we need to highlight that the relationship and the work that we carry out with Africa represents a whole challenge. <laughs> Not only because we have different languages, different accents, different cultures, and how do they perceive salsa cooperation, etc. In a progress from APC Colombia in negotiations with Africa, in October 2020, we provide provide opportunity to um, relationship with the uh, Audanepad. This partner was identified, and it's really important for us because it has the technical knowledge and the technical presence and and every African country, which is opening the door to a multilateral and regional mechanism, which was what we're moving on to, as I mentioned in this region. I remember I mentioned punctual anxious between the projects and with this conclusion of improvement and the completion of a financial contribution that we did from APC Colombia, we gave a step to uh, move to better South-South cooperation projects between Africa and Colombia. Um, for, we have Aldanepad and APC Colombia here involved in this, and we have the next report, we'll see the results of this cooperation of this um, initiative that started in 2020. 
regarding international assistance, as we mentioned before, in, in solidarity in the framework of pandemic from Colombia with the resources of cooperation of FOCAI, uh, despite the difficulties that our countries had, uh, we took care of international colleagues, but are mostly from countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, especially related to topics that had to do with the pandemic. We saw resources that we could strengthen um, um, so they could buy medical um, supplies like um, mouth guards, like uh, face masks, like uh, respirators and everything that has to do with hurricanes as well. We have been trying to help people. And also we did an assistance related to the explosion that unfortunately happened in the capital of Lebanon. This is the summary of the assistance that we provided in Colombia in the framework of what was the principle of solidarity and principle of social cooperation. And my colleague Miriam Escajan is going to talk about the international assistance that we received from countries of the global south. We received in this solidarity display between the partner countries of the global south donations from the governments of China, Turkey, and Vietnam, especially to take care of the emergency generated by COVID-19. In the case of China, Colombia received by the Chinese government diverse donations uh, by provinces, companies, and the Chinese community in Colombia. Medical inputs, protection gear, and also they did a donation of platforms for video conferences in such a way that the medical staff would have remote assistance in many parts of Colombia. From the central government received $286,000 for medical inputs and testing for COVID-19. That by the first lady with the nation that was significant especially um, aiming to work with people in situations of vulnerability caused by the pandemic. In the case of the government of Turkey, next slide. Here, in the case of the nations from Turkey, we received both nationally and uh, territorially uh, equipment and donations for the attention of the healthcare crisis. Amongst the donations, we have hospital kits of prevention and protection, uh, basic um, groceries, mechanical ventilators, and thermal cameras. In the slide, we will be able to see the detail of those donations that is facilitated by the Office of TICA in Colombia. The government, finally, the government of uh, the Social Work of Vietnam donated a face mask. Uh, to the social protection ministry and healthcare. And this is uh, uh, gives us a sign of solidarity for a relationship between Colombia and these countries. Mary and Daniel, thank you very much for this journey about the contributions of assistance, international assistance, and other aspects. And now let's move quickly to Ms. Angela to talk to us about what's this about the Global Alliance for the Cooperation for the Development and how we were working in 2020 together. Now, before telling you that all this report, all this you will be able to find it in the APC uh, Colombia website. Mm. The Global Alliance for Cooperation Applied to Development is a group work a group, a work group that was created in South Korea as a result of the four high level forum on efficiency uh, cooperation. And the objective of this group is to provide follow up of these four principles that we're going to see in the next slide. And in the framework of this work, APC Colombia for the period 2019-2022 is leading a group of work on South South cooperation. And our purpose of this to have this group is to visualize South South cooperation as a modality that really contributes from the global south to the sustainable development of the world. And that is in line with the principles of effectiveness uh, for the uh, 2030 agenda. Our work plan 
and the asset has two lines of work one of them creation of knowledge and another one um, dialogue for these lines were developing and applying some pilot programs of measurement or quantification or social cooperation with eight partners, which are Bangladesh, Cabo, Cape Verde, Colombia, El Salvador, Indonesia, Kenya, Mexico, and Rwanda. And in the space of dialogue promotion, we're working with either eight countries plus other partners of different nature, such as Canada, Georgia, Nepal, and the political sounds, um, Peru, ITO, UNA, and UNODC. Next slide, please. As I started mentioning, um, this is an issue that promotes four principles of corporations, which are the ones that are in the right column, the national ownership of cooperation, transparency, and accountability. Mutual accountability, focus on results, and the lenses are hypothesis that the principles are perfectly compatible with the principles of South-South Cooperation by the Indonesians that our general director mentioned in her opening remark remarks that are on the left column. We work precisely to visibilize through the quantification and the pilot work, the contribution that Salsa Corporation does to the 2030 agenda and to all the principles that we have. That basically the seed of the work that we're carrying out in a set that can be uh, que uh, queued and que queried in our webpage. Thank you, Luis Angel from Argentina, Fernando Miriam, they tell us it's a pleasure to see the provenization and diversification of South South Cooperation of Colombia and the Global South. Thank you very much, Fernando, because that's what, what all this exercise is about to make this cooperation much more robust. So now to conclusions, I'm gonna to move to Catalina Quintero and Miriam Escallon. Well, thank you. The idea of this event is precisely that to motivate you to download this report for you to analyze it in detail, and of course, for us to be able to share with you our main results. I'm going to talk about the conclusions. The first conclusion that has to do with everything that we mentioned in the first chapter, and the pandemic showed us that we are completely dependent, and that's why may, normal problems will be in real time and to give us uh, promptness pragmatics. Um, this demands a high capability of cooperation with social corporations with the new global commissions and global context of development. What we did last year was to give a prevalence of focus, but it's like allowed to generate planned interventions with results that are clearly identifiable and with follow up and closing tools that ensure not only quantification, but also the identification of the added value of South-South cooperation that Colombia performs. As we mentioned before, we keep working under the focus and optics in South-South cooperation. 2020, Latin America and the Caribbean registered the greatest number of projects and punctual actions from South-South cooperation that Colombia performs with the reduction in the number of activities in comparison to the previous year due to the pandemic. They're kept really, the initiatives uh, that are moved, that are, are carried out with Africa and Asia are stable. Triangular cooperation projects also had to be readjusted depending on the context of the pandemic, but fortunately, successfully for most of these projects. APC Colombia. APC Colombia has applied the promotion and the solidarity support of SASA Corporation through multilateral mechanisms as a strategy to broaden the effect that this tool, development tool, has and to apply more integrated visions. The strategic alliances moved in uh, their career in 2020 between our Latin America and Africa allowed to include a great number of countries, boosting the results. That's for the promotion and creation of knowledge between the Global South partners. And of course, as final part, and it's one of the seals that we want to leave from Salsa Cooperation, uh, APC Colombia, is to be able to quantify the Salsa Cooperation, but also to have tools that will allow to provide information regarding the adding of value of these projects. That we what do we find by doing this? That mainly all these projects has a high, have a high score in the generation of knowledge. 
de los resultados de los intercambios. So what does this mean? That important part of the results that were done in the year 2020 were reflected in the strengthening of capacities, knowledge, and skills of beneficiaries. And also, we found through the application of this tool that most of the parties had a high score in its relationship. So this means that a lot of more working networks were generated, a lot of more exchanges from the implementation of these projects. These are the main results and conclusions of this 2020 report. And as we mentioned before, we hope that all of you will be able to read it and analyze it and discuss. Thank you. Guys, don't forget that you can download this report in the APC Colombia website, where you have this analysis report of South South Cooperation of 2020. And this way we are reaching the end of this lunch. The most important thing is for you to be able to access this document. Of course, you will be able to download it. So now to give your final remarks to director, director with the closing of all your management for your positioning in a country which is very friendly Colombia, which we do a lot of good of cooperation. So you will keep working with us. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Winnie. Thank you very much to the team of our APC Colombia. And of course, thank you very much to our South South Cooperation partners. South South Cooperation from APC Colombia has also its in its implementation a huge commitment with the document that was subscribed and signed in AUPAS 40. Um, that's why the, the challenge is there, a challenge that leads us towards innovation, but especially towards something that we were presenting and that you proposed, Daniel, to promote, promote in the case of Colombia, a solid offer an offer with proper assistance in the budgetary assistance and an offer that may have sustainability and traceability. I would like to close this moment by thanking all our South South Cooperation Global Partners that answered to the demands of Colombia with this project. And a lot of the demand of Colombia became a demand uh, that was a two ways. Also, I would like to thank to the official partners in the strengthening of triangular cooperation as well. So the Global South South right now, it's one of the uh, most important challenges that we have in the contribution in the decade of action in the fulfillment of that agenda to not leave anyone behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director, and thank you everyone for having joined us here, for having connected to this call, to this Facebook Live. Um, you can follow us on ABC Colombia and you'll be able to see this video. And of course, the analysis of cooperation, South South Cooperation of Colombia during the year 2020. To everyone, have a rest of the day that's very happy. Thank you very much.